Hey guys, welcome to the Liberal Hive Mind, a channel solely focused on exposing the abundant hypocrisy of the left. Finally, people are discussing the ideas that we have been mentioning for so long. I do not care what the polls say on surface level, even though most of the polls that we're seeing right now are starting to favor Republicans and it's painting a very good image. I don't care what the surface level Democrat versus Republican numbers are. I really want to focus on all of the factors and all of the nuance. That is how you get the true image, the true picture of what is most likely to come in the election in 2022. And this has been my grievance with what all of these Democrats on Twitter have been saying. They completely ignore all of the most reputable pollsters and then just link something like this. <laughs> Ah, uh, yes, of course, Fetterman's leading by 21 points, Kelly's leading by 15, Warnock by 10, and Ryan by 6. Totally believable. Great job, Echelon Insights. But for real, Democrats post this stuff because it fits their copium dreams, it fits what they're hoping, and they actually believe it. These absolute garbage polls, and even some of these more perceived reputable pollsters, the numbers on surface level mean nothing. At the end of the day, there are so many factors, especially when trying to gauge Republican support and Republican voter turnout. And the moment you start to see pollsters or particular polls apply some of these factors to their polling data, or if you delve into the actual numbers and filter out some of the nonsense and some of the crap, like polling all adults, for instance, and you start to focus in on only likely voters, motivated voters, a completely different picture emerges. And this right here, friends, is exactly why the pollsters get it so wrong every single time, unless we're in a Democrat-favored environment. And well, this week, folks, surprisingly enough, we have a string of pollsters who are finally screening specifically for likely voters. And well, let's just say it's not exactly what Democrats were hoping for. It's painting a very, very different image. Let's just say a leftist meltdown-inducing image as Republicans continue to surge. Let me show you guys exactly what's going on here, as finally people are starting to wake up to the voter enthusiasm gap and the Republican voter turnout element of this election, we've got some stuff to get into, so let's roll the tape. All right, friends, so people are finally starting to focus in on the most important factor. Even Fox News did a piece on it this week with Robert Cahaley from Trafalgar Group. Republican turnout will exceed even what we predict. Robert Cahaley. Why do pollsters keep getting the numbers wrong and underreporting GOP support? It's a pattern here. Well, it certainly is. And I think part of it is that they keep asking these ridiculously long questionnaires and they just lose average people. Uh, and in 20, you know, 2016, you had shy Trump voters who were hesitant because uh, just to say who they were for, they didn't want to be judged for it. And in 2020, uh, they were a little leery to even participate in polls. And I think this time it could be worse. Robert, I got about a, a minute left, a little less. You have a really brilliant strategy where you guys ask the neighbors about how you ask voters how their neighbors would vote. How does that work? How do you eliminate bias that way? Well, what we would do is we would just ask, it was a device I learned a few years back, we, we would just ask people, you know, how do you think your neighbors are voting? It's a projection device, and it would allow people to explain that, uh, yeah, yes, maybe I'm, I'm for Hillary, but my neighbors are all for Trump, and it let them say they were for Trump without being judged. This year, our fear is that people are not going to be polled that are Trump supporters because all that Biden has said and all the uh, apparent attacks and people coming after them, and they're just hesitant to even participate. I think everybody will underestimate them, including us. Republican turnout will exceed even what we predict. And well, like usual, Robert Cahaley has a point. And I know this because the data is backing him up. A bunch of new polls recently released. 2022 generic congressional ballot polling among likely voters alone. Take a look at this data set. ABC slash The Washington Post, a left-leaning pollster, showing the GOP in the lead at 51% to 46%, a plus 5 lead when screening specifically for likely voters. CBS slash YouGov, showing a GOP lead of plus 1. This is incredibly significant, because as you guys know, YouGov is one of the worst, most Democrat-biased pollsters currently calculated in all of the averages, and they've been showing Democrat leads all the way up to plus 8 over the last two months. Well, 
immediately as they screen for likely voters, would you look at that? Look at that, look at that. Yeah, sure. yeah look at that. <laughs> the GOP suddenly takes the lead, even in a massively oversampled Democrat survey. I've showed you guys countless YouGov polls when we delve into the data, where they're undersampling Republican voters by over 10 percentage points. But the list goes on. We have the McLaughlin Republican poll and the Data for Progress Democrat poll, both showing GOP leads, and Trafalgar Group showing a plus six lead. All of these polls specifically focusing in on likely voters. This is what I mean by the numbers themselves don't mean anything. You gotta look at the numbers and then you gotta apply the factors. If you're looking at a poll from whatever polling outlet and it's just looking at adults and it's oversampling Democrats, what kind of result do you think you're gonna get? You're polling all kinds of people who aren't politically involved, all kinds of people who don't necessarily pay attention and they have the default value of Republicans bad, Fox News evil, orange man bad, and you ask them who are they gonna vote for and they're gonna say, uh, I guess the Democrats, I guess Joe Biden. But the question is, is that person likely to vote in a midterm? Is that person likely to skip going out to dinner or going to the bar, taking a girl on a date, sacrificing their personal social life in order to go vote and wait in line for however many hours, depending on the situation? In many cases, that person will not show up. And the same thing with young voters. Many young voters talk a big game. They have all of these grandiose political ideas and stances. They're staunch Democrats, staunch socialists. They spend a whole lot of time on Twitch watching Hassan Piker and attacking MAGA chuds on r slash politics on Reddit. But will they go vote? A significant portion won't. Guess what, folks? Republican voters and independent voters who are currently being crushed by the increases in cost of living that are seeing their 401ks disintegrate, people are seeing the increase in crime in their communities, people who are seeing businesses suffer under Democrat leadership, those people are showing up. And guess what? They're voting Republican. And they're planning on voting Republican in the most important districts. Take a look at this. This is from the ABC slash Washington Post poll. Republicans hold a 21 point lead on generic congressional ballot in battleground districts. Republicans at 55 plus 21 over Democrats at 34. In moderate battleground states and battleground districts, just like I've been saying, independents are splitting for the Republicans at a 2 to 1 ratio in many cases. And we're seeing that right over here. Republicans not only leading, Republicans leading by 21 points in the most important, most pivotal battleground districts. You mean to tell me that Democrats stand a chance here? Oh, but Libra Hive Mind, didn't you see the poll where John Fetterman is leading by 24 points? Oh, didn't you see the poll where Liz Cheney is winning by 75 points? No, pay attention. Pay attention to suburban voters. Pay attention to independent voters. Pay attention to the political trend amongst the most important voter blocks and pay attention to likely voters. I mean, just take a look at this on Real Clear Politics, just so you guys can see it visually. All of the polls conducted in the earlier portion of the month, almost all of them except for one, are among registered voters. Democrats are leading. All of a sudden, the last one, two, three, four polls that were released, the ones that we're talking about, and this is actually omitting Trafalgar Group, or rather, actually, Trafalgar Group did a likely voter earlier in the month, that's the one that stands out. All of a sudden, the race flips on its head and Republicans lead in every single poll. This is what happens when you actually apply the important factors when collecting your data. Once again, the party of science is looking at this whole thing completely unscientifically. Oh, this one poll agrees with my narrative and confirms my worldview, therefore, oh, m abortion, m angry women are going to win us this election. No. And even that argument is completely ridiculous. The idea that abortion or the most recent Roe v. Wade decision only helps generate voter enthusiasm for the Democrats. As former Governor Christie on ABC's This Week puts it, that's not true at all. Let's let's talk about the abortion issue because 84% of the voters say the economy is their top issue. Only 62% say abortion. And when you go deeper into the poll and look at some of the crosstabs on this, what our poll is showing is that the pro-life people are more motivated by the abortion issue to vote in these midterms than the pro-choice people are. What our poll is showing is that the pro-life people are more motivated by the abortion issue to vote in these midterms than pro-choice people are. This, once again, is exactly what I've been saying. The keys here are voter enthusiasm, the keys are demographics, important issues, and every single one of those factors currently benefits the Republican Party. Every single one. The issues and the policies 
policies, Republicans are winning. We've covered that a million times. Voter enthusiasm, Republicans are winning. Likely voter polling data, Republicans are winning. Demographic shifts, Republicans are winning. They're winning with suburban voters, independent voters. They're gaining black votes. They're gaining Hispanic votes. They're gaining support amongst Asian American voters. Across the board, Republicans are gaining. Republicans are winning. And the moment the data just starts to apply one of these factors, just screening for likely voters, all of a sudden, across the board, we see Republican leads. It's an I told you so moment. I'm sticking to my prediction here. Republicans win the House. Republicans win the Senate. And I don't think it's going to be even close. This might be the red tsunami that a lot of you guys have been waiting for. That's what I got for you, though. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to leave a like and possibly subscribe to the channel if you guys are up for it. I'm going to get back to work. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.